Hello everyone, Argon Matrix here, welcoming you to episode 3 of Let's Play Zelda 2. It is October 17th, I mean 7th, <laughs> a Friday. It is very stormy and gloom and doom outside. My favorite kind of weather, and I figure why not record some of my Death Mountain here. Even though I'm totally not ready for it. Like I said, I've never done Death Mountain before the second palace before, so... I can probably promise you at least one or two deaths here. I'm not sure entirely. Alright, this guy can be kind of annoying. Yeah, these guys are always just kind of annoying to me. I don't know. They're sort of unpredictable, but... They don't do too much, thankfully. And they don't take too much, either. You can't take what you got, man. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I haven't recorded in so long, though. Like, seriously. I know most of you will know that, because I haven't posted in, like, six or seven days here. And that's about how long it's been since I recorded, too. It's mostly been homework that's been holding me up, just, like, getting about eight to ten hours of homework a night. And sadly, that's gotta, that's gotta be what comes first, you know? I've also been a little bit sick lately. I'm still a little bit sick right now, just a bit of a cold. So I don't know if that's gonna impact my voice too much here. It probably will. <laughs> I don't know, but you can never tell yourself when your voice is actually, like, bad. Unless it's super bad, then you then you know, for sure. Alright, I think this cave is where things are going to start to go to crap here in Death Mountain. Because if, if I remember right, there's actually an enemy in this cave right at the end. And it's going to be really annoying. I'm going to set up my shield, just because I need to feel safe with this. And let's see, is he going to be here? Is he going to be here? Oh, here he is, the, the axe-wielding crocodile man. Alright, so you gotta wait for the right time to strike, and then just... I really don't know how to explain that kind of attack pattern that I do, like the rhythm there. Um, basically you gotta time it so that you step the first time you stab him is right after... Like, right after when he finishes attacking. And then after that, you just gotta keep advancing on him and stabbing, like, like a uh, ducking and stabbing. And don't retreat at all, just keep going forward towards him. Just keep barreling forward. And just keep doing that same thing, I don't know. It's really hard to explain, you just have to kind of, it's one of those things that you kind of have to get the rhythm for. Alright, now we got the red version of this guy who actually throws his axe. This guy's actually a lot easier in my opinion, because it's so much easier to time his attacks. And like, react accordingly, just jump over. The way you fight him is kind of, pretty much just like an iron knuckle. It's not too bad at all. I'm gonna get this red magic pot here. Just because I feel I might need it. I don't know. Because I gotta get all the magic that I can. I gotta stay full on magic here. Do I have enough for life? No, I don't. But now I do. Mm. Yeah, that's a little trick you can use. If you, um... If you, if you get a magic pot and then cast a spell as the magic pot is refilling your magic, then you can actually, like... I don't know how to explain that. You get more magic. Like, it continues filling up without deduce re without reducing the amount of magic that it costs the spell for I, I really that is one of the hardest things to explain about this whole thing it's kind of just like it's almost just like kind of self-explanatory though how it happens like why you should do that I don't know seems like kind of commonsensical but common sense is actually one of the hardest things to explain in the whole world so I don't know it's like when they try to ask you to define a really easy word, like, how do you define the word definition? Like, it's in the- it's- it's applied in the word itself, like, it's common sense, you know? Alright, let's time this guy right. Yeah, you have to be really careful, though, because you have to- If you don't go close enough to him, then you're not going to be able to stab him, and he's just going to hit you. But if you go too close to him, then- then you're just going to run right into him and take the hit anyways. So you've got to get, like, in this habit of just getting close enough to hit him, but not so close that you're not going to be able to, like, avoid him, or you're going to take too long to get there, and then he's going to hit you. Yeah, see, I wasn't close enough there, so he hit me. Those guys aren't- they're not too bad, they're not nearly as bad as I remember them being the first time I played this game, but they are, they are still pretty bad. There are worse enemies in this game, definitely, though. Like the blue iron knuckles that I mentioned before. Alright, just because I want to be full on life, let's do this. Wait for the magic to fill all the way up. Just kind of that nice little courtesy to the game. And here, oh, for a minute I expected to fall there. Jeez, I forgot this is like the cave where we get the hammer, not like the cave where we get a magic refill. Oh, crap. Oh, no, crap, okay. 
Yeah, that's the problem with the red ones, though, is that sometimes they have to throw two axes like that. I'm gonna cast life, actually. Do I have enough for shield, too? No, I don't. Crap. Yeah, sometimes they have to throw a second one, and unless you're really fast, like, and I mean really fast on the controller, you can't jump over that. Thankfully, like, he was about to throw a second one there, but I killed him in time. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes if you see him, like, recoiling for a second attack, you might just want to kind of back off and concentrate more on jumping over the axe than actually hitting him. Because I guess, overall, your life is more important than him dying. Because you can take forever and a day to kill him, but if you run out of life, that's it, you're dead. I don't know. Alright, crap. I wasn't expecting this guy, and I wasn't ready to, like, attack him. My fingers were not prepared to go through that enduring thing, where you have to, like, keep sliding your finger down continually on the control pad. I don't know. Oh, that's one of the hard- that's another one of the hard things to explain, is, like, how do you control all this? Because this game, it really is, like, a game that you have to kind of play for yourself and just figure out. Like, you have to work your way around the controller for this game. And no matter how much someone tries to explain it to you, there is no way you're, they're going to be exp they're, that like anyone can explain how they're doing what they're doing for the most part. Like you've heard me babble on about that stuff for for a long time now. <laughs> babble on. All right. Oh no! Oh crap! I, put, I probably should have put on a shield there just to be safe. And I went really quiet there too. That was stupid. <laughs> I just went all quiet trying to concentrate on him. And that's the worst thing you can do in a Let's Play, I tell you. You don't have time to concentrate when you gotta be talking and cracking jokes and shit. I don't like this. Ugh. Another thing about this guy is that he's got a really low-hanging ceiling over him, this thing here. So he's even harder to hit than any normal one. Right. Be careful when going through caves like this when there's a bunch of pits, because if you jump too fast, then obviously like, that guy would hit you. That guy's actually a bit of a special enemy. You can't kill him at this point. Even if you duck and stab, your sword is going to go a bit over him. You need the downward thrust to get that guy. Which we will be picking up probably in this video, even. Oh, voice cracks. Brah! I hate it when my voice cracks. Because my voice cracks in the stupidest ways, too. It's not even, like, the funny ways. It just, like, goes, like, so weird. Alright. I don't know why I always go quiet while fighting those red ones. Here's the hammer, though. Is it the Megaton hammer? I don't know. Maybe it's the Gigaton hammer. Ooh. That would be special. But the real purpose of this hammer is just to eliminate some rocks in the overworld. I think you can actually, like, destroy forest things in this with the hammer, too. But I think that only comes into play once throughout the entirety of the game. Otherwise, you can just do that if you, like, don't want to fight anything in the forest. You can get rid of the forest and just, uh... And turn it into grass, I guess. Oh, pfft. Wow, that was close. I almost got hit by that little fucker. Man, what's with my superfluous cussing? I tell you, I've been cussing so much lately. Maybe not in the videos, but... I've just been cussing a lot more than I normally do lately, and I don't know why. <sighs> Maybe it's just some deep inner psychology that I'm mad about something. Who knows? Oh man, I'm so tired. Sorry if this commentary is really lackluster here. Like, I know I'm not really doing that great here or, any or anything, but... I don't know, man. Oh, let's do this, actually. I want to be full on life. That's the most important thing to me right now. And we're almost full on magic, so that turned out rather well there. Yeah, but I was up to like 4 a.m. last night. Just like... Not even doing anything productive, because I have a long weekend this weekend. It's Thanksgiving weekend, awesomely. Because if you don't know, in Canada, Thanksgiving is on October 10th. Not in, like, November in the United States. Yeah, but I have a four-day weekend here, so that's going to be really good. Especially to get some recording done. But it, it also gave me an excuse to, like, stay up late. Because lately I've been going to bed, like, really early. With, like, around midnight, which is early for me. But this time I stay up till like, 4.30 a.m., Pretty much just playing Plants vs. Zombies the whole time. I tell you, that game is so much fun. It's so addicting, but it's so much fun. Yeah. Huh. This encounter might not be a little bit bad to grind off of. The hard encounters in this desert area. 
Because, like, Blue Garayas, if they drop a P-Bag especially, because you get 200 points for a P-Bag from Blue Garaya. Alright. Be very careful in this cave. cave. This cave is probably, like, one of the worst places in terms of, like, my memories of it in this whole game. Because these Octoroks killed me more than just about anything else in the whole game. And not even, like, them just killing me. Like, they would hit me, hit me mid-jump and knock me back into the pits. Because that's just what happens. And unless you've played through this game, like, plenty of times, then they're pretty much gonna get you for, like, every time you go into that cave. Thankfully, I remembered there. So I managed to avert a bit of a crisis. So you just gotta be really careful when dealing with that. Oh man, I hate this guy, too. He, like, throws his spear sometimes. He's not too hard to block, I guess, but... Yeah, thankfully, you can block that guy's spear. Alright, this next bridge here, this is where the real shit is, though. Because we got to fight one of these guys in broad daylight, which looks really hilarious. Like, I don't know, the crisp, menacing aspect of his of his sprite, just, it's not meant to be shown on this bright of a background, so he just looks really stupid here. I think I got really lucky there, too, though, because normally, like, while you're fighting that guy, trying to jump at him and stab him, a bubble will come out of nowhere and just hit you. I don't know what they call those bubbles, because there's already something else called bubbles in this game, but I don't know what else I would call them. Rocks? Who knows? Geysers? Geezers? Oh, that was a one-up doll down there, by the way. Yeah, sorry if I'm not explaining, like, half the stuff I do here. Mostly it's just instinct to me, so... But I have to remember that it's probably not instinct to most of you, because most of you probably haven't even played this game. Uh, there's actually quite a few of you that have played this game, to my surprise, though, based on the comments and messages and stuff I've been getting. And you're all telling me that I'm so good at the game, I'm so good. I'm not that good at this game, trust me. Like, I think I displayed a, an above average, like a falsified display of skill for me in those first few episodes, because, I don't know, because I've played through the beginning of the game so many times, just because I keep dying or like getting game overs and stuff like later in the game, and then I just don't feel compelled to continue anymore after that, so I just start again. So that section of the game is probably the most, like, the most, the area of the game I've played through the most. I want to get up here. And so that's why I was doing actually pretty good at that part. But later in the game, I tell you, I'm just going to start sucking, dying left and right. <laughs> Not making it past, like, one screen without at least dying once. Right here is where you're going to learn the most useful thing in this whole game. When you jump, press downward to stab. Oh, boy. <laughs> I love that there's a little Zelda fanfare, but nothing actually changes on the screen. That's hilarious. Alright, yeah, so now we got our downward stab action here. Oh yeah, it looks cool, and it is the coolest thing in this whole game, pretty much. Oh, you are going to bless that. You're just going to love it so much. Because I tell you, there's nothing more satisfying in, like, any Nintendo game, pretty much than just bouncing from enemy to enemy with this downward stab and just killing everything in sight. It is so rewarding. Oh my god. I know I'm hyping it up a little bit, probably more than it actually deserves, because it's not that great in some instances, but I tell ya, without it this game will be much harder than it already is. Alright, so I want to head over here. There should be a heart container if you're- yeah, now we can kill these guys. The- oh man. Yeah, see, I'm sick here, so my voice keeps kind of, like, cutting out and cracking and stuff, and it's just not fun. Yeah. I think the, the Garayas are actually easier to kill without the downward stab. Maybe that's just me. Because whenever I see someone else kill them, they normally use the downward stab. I don't know. Probably didn't need to use that life spell there, because I'm about to get a heart container right here, which will fill up my life anyways, but... Oh well. Dude, did I forget to pick up that magic container at Death Mountain? I think I did. Am I gonna have to go back for that now? Crap. Oh, well, you know what? I'm just gonna have to deal with that in the next episode, because we're just about up to 15 minutes here, so I think I'm gonna call it a day, fine, folks. And I'll just show you the shortcut back to, like, the first area of the game while we're here. Yeah, see, this is the first time we visited, which actually is... Let's see. Let me see. Welcome to Raru. Alright, so this is Raru. Cool. Anyways, I think I'll call it a day here, folks. So thanks everyone for watching. This has been Aryan Matrix, signing out.
Thank you, and good night.